just not sure that like that restricting those things uh, is it's not it's not as liberal as I would like it. Uh, I like the idea to create a, a vibrant business center of business thing. And I think you should, even if you have a vacancy now, I think in the long term you should kind of keep up with that, that kind of thinking. Um, so I, I think it makes sense. Um, why not below grade? It says not storefront behind or above the first level, but there are two medical buildings on Locust Street that both have labs in the basement. You know, and it's commercial. It's commercial space. It's finished. It's leasable, but it's below grade. Um, I don't think there's a. I, I would agree with you. I think that it still meets the intent of this. Is um, so. So we can um, you can add the word below. 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 Yeah. So I can understand your even having. Want to take up a vital storefront space, yeah, but right. no, below grade okay. doesn't do that. And there's a couple labs that are below grade now that I know of that right. are in the city. Mm -hmm. um, did community resources make a recommendation on this ordinance, or um, I don't know what your process is. Yeah. 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 No, it's a neutral. This one is now So, uh, how are you folks feeling? I mean, are you folks feeling like you need additional? smell language in this particular ordinance and I think it might be good if we went through this and then to public comment because there is someone here who could speak to that relative to testing okay um, I think and that I think, I should move on. well I'm just saying <laughs> I think that that was the that's what I heard I don't want to speak for you <laughs> but that's what I heard from the um, members was that you know they were they didn't have enough information okay. We usually open the public hearing. Did I miss a motion to that? Or are we waiting? We usually, we don't make a motion until, yeah, like we start our hearing. And then the chair can open the public hearing. There's no need to have a motion. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I say welcome, we're open. Very good. There it is. Um, so we'll move on to the next one, which is 19.055, which is regarding the Plan Village District and manufacturing cultivation or testing facilities in that district. Um, so for folks who are sitting in the audience, that will be up on the screen in just a minute. Um, so this one is, we never um, included any um, provisions for um, regarding marijuana sales or manufacturing in the Plain Village District. There have been um, a couple of inquiries about um, from people who were interested in the last remaining industrial parcels along mm -hmm. at, at the state hospital. So, um, and and since that portion of the state hospital was intended for more sort of that industrial type of use, mm -hmm. it made sense to go ahead and wrap that in. Um, at this point, uh, we don't know if anything will ever, you know, happen at the state hospital, but that was the intent of uh, providing the allowance for that. And the folks on our board and the public, the federal district of largely includes parts of Florence and the center and hospital? No, it's only the same hospital. Oh, no, it's only the same hospital. Okay. Yeah. So I have a map here. Okay. I just put it up. Oh, you did. Okay. okay. So, um, yeah, I'll it's um, on the screen, um, but just if you can't see that, and I'll show it to the, um, folks that are, um, in the audience. So um, it's this area here, which is just west, uh, along West Street. <laughs> um, the other provision here is the first introduction as well for in terms of production for requiring um, uh, air handlers, mm -hmm. um, specifically high efficiency particulate air handlers with activated carbon filters and exhaust systems designed to <coughs> and forces the air at least 10 feet above the roof line. So um, as an alternative to that, uh, if there's other technology that is in, um, desired, that would require a planning board uh, site <coughs> approval. Um, and that the board can approve 
if uh, the technology, to the extent practical, will limit odors from marijuana in any place where the public or clients are present. So it um, specifies what you need to use because it's been determined that this is the most effective way of eliminating odors. But if someone else has another idea, that's sort of their out to come to the board. So this language you will see is mirrored in the other ordinance amendments. Um, so as we adopt it into the Planning Village District, then this will be um, part of that language as well. Questions? Comments? <clears throat> well, I guess I'm curious, how did this kind of rise to the, in the PV area? Did a, uh, a business come to us and say, I'd like to operate such and such with an yes. hospital? Yep. Yeah. And we, and we, we, and we looked and said, oh, well, it's not really allowed here. <laughs> Why? And since we allowed in the office industrial and general industrial district, it seemed to make sense to okay. incorporate into Pine Village. Okay. Are people interested in hearing the community resources? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's useful to you, but yeah. um, the question came up about um, Enforcement, I guess, mm -hmm. if there are complaints. Um, and we, were, we discussed it that the, actually the building inspector would be called in, correct? Yes, and then there was a question about, yes, um, that any, uh, like with any concern about an issue, the first call goes to the government commission, <coughs> which is the zoning code enforcement officer. And then I think the only other question was just. Um, the proximity of residences to this area. So this, I guess, would front on Earl Street, and on the other side of Earl Street, there are some residences. And there was a question about how many stories they were in terms of the kind of 10-foot stack, if it would be blowing above the residences. And mm -hmm. um, I think that the Community Resources Committee felt reassured um, as we talked it through that the 10-foot stack in the filtration system is <laughs> and Carolyn, just to clarify, I mean, anybody who would be proposing this would come to us for site plan approval anyway? Or no? Um, so any new building, yes, in the plan building requires site plan approval. Yeah. Right. But in the other districts, um, this is if it's an existing building, then someone could move in, but they have to incorporate this feature into the building. And if they had a different idea, you know, a different feature that they thought would be better, that would be part of the site plan. That would trigger the site plan review. Okay. For even for an existing building, if an applicant were um, intending to reuse a space that already is there, would there be a downside to to it being a special site plan review? Like, can your outline can just be site plan versus special plan review? Um, yeah, because, because it seems so like it's sort of not subjective, but kind of like I know you prescribe this kind of air gambling, but I think this is better. And if people bring it to us and have like scientific information, I mean, it just kind of like reminds me of an evaluation we do in like a, a special permit context versus a site plan context. But I think the idea is that we want to make sh we want to provide, um, if there's a buy right standard, we want to provide an out that's still buy right that you have to prove. And I think there are many of the items, many of the oh, okay. elements of site plan are very technical in nature. Yeah. And it's up to the board to evaluate the information that's provided. So I um, I think this really falls into that same kind of thing. Okay. That makes sense. <coughs> yes. Just a, a process question. So Back to your question regarding the mixed use of this area. How were residents notified of this new inclusion into that table? Is this the public hearing and notice went out about the public hearing? Um, was there any public participation in your... <coughs> so they don't need... To, this kind of thing doesn't trigger uh, mailings to a butters, right? At this point. Okay. But any project? In, in PV, it would, yeah, right. in front of the right. um, So the next order is 19.056 is a similar kind of intention. Um, right, so this is for medical marijuana because we still distinguish between medical and adult use retail marijuana mm -hmm. um, because the regs haven't been merged yet. So um, 
this is to ensure that this covers medical uh, production as well, um, to add the uh, air handlers for, for that, um, and the same site plan approval process for the planning board. The um, one clarification that came out of community resources was um, making sure that this was about mer medical, man medical marijuana manufacturing as opposed to sales. So there wasn't that, so adding that into the title so that it's um, clear that it's relating to the um, cultivation and production. So is that the body too? Sort of the word manufacturing. Okay. So does that take away the word operations? Is that being replaced? No, just okay. adding the word manufacturing. Okay. In front of that. Great. Anything else from community resources? Okay. And the last note, fourth one, is 19.057 uh, about marijuana manufacturing by right in the leader handling requirement. So right. same here. The same here, this is for the office industrial and general industrial districts. Where we allow production. And then the last one, 19058, clarifying provisions for how work for Right, so uh, right now, a special permit is required for uh, um, outdoor um, cultivation. And when this was originally adopted, the intention was that it really was outdoor. It wasn't meant for greenhouses and you're on a farm. Um, so, but that question has come up from perspective uh, growers about whether or not they could put buildings up and whether it was accessory or not. So this is really clarifying language to uh, specify that um, growing and cultivation, by adding to the definition that growing and cultivation outdoors is without <coughs> greenhouses or food houses or other cover covered structures with the exception of cold frames or row covers used to start seedlings that are less than 24 inches tall and can only be done between the months of April, April 1 to May 15. And accessory buildings to support that the outdoor growing may be no larger than 1,000 square feet and may only be used for meeting the requirements of the Cannabis Control Commission for providing bathrooms, weighing, measuring, seed distribution, tracking, and other activities, I'll come back to that, required of harvesting plants to prepare them for shipment off-site. So um, again, to be very explicit to growers to say, the only, you can only have an accessory building. Everything needs to be outside, and we know that it's not going to be a 12-month process because the idea was it's outdoor, just like corn or whatever else. Yeah, yeah. And it was intended to really, to, this is to allow the smaller growers or farmers to be able to maybe um, convert or use some of their farmland for mm -hmm. this purpose. The one comment that came up at the community resources was in the last um, line, it said um, tracking and other processing activities, and they wanted to strike the word processing mm -hmm. because they, because that was probably overly broad or vague. So eliminating that, we don't think changes the intent of the definition. Right. Questions, comments? Okay. Thank you. And I might suggest April and May, rather than May 15th, uh, for those starting structures, because we've been known to have frosts after May 15th. But generally, the thought is you can do safely do annuals by, by Memorial Day weekend, but I think I give them April and May, because I know we've seen frosts yeah. late, later in May. Mm -hmm. they, they have a tangible reason to want to. Protect them. Seedlings. I'm comfortable with that. Is that yeah. appropriate, Carolyn? Is it I, I mean, I don't see any problem yeah. with anyone else. Um, and anything else from community resources on this? Um, the only thing that I remember, there were a couple of questions about um, would there be a possibility for outdoor grow lights? How would that affect neighbors? Um, and something about shielding of the building, the way that the um, because we're we're literally talking about. I mean, I know that <clears throat> in Leeds, and which is Ward Seven, um, that I represent, there's a proposed kind of a proposal that hasn't actually come forward 
uh, on Kennedy Road, and it's literally uh, between two houses. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a lot of concern about what this outdoor building is going to look like. Are there going to be lights on the building? Is the security, the security lights going to be? So there are already all these concerns and questions about the, the accessory building. Yeah. Um, but then also thinking about whether there is the possibility for outdoor grow lights um, creating too much light for these right. adjacent yeah. houses. So would like an accessory building like that mm -hmm. come before us on site plan? Because those are the things that we look at during site plan review. We look at photometric plans. We look at landscaping, shielding, and all those things. So the, yeah. is the protection already in place for us to? It is. And what we those? discussed is that this is actually a special permit. So oh, okay. and um, so all of those elements or features that someone might want to include in an application would be evaluated by the board but under <coughs> special permit and again a special permit because maybe it's maybe the outdoor growing is not appropriate in certain locations mm -hmm. so and then other locations it might be appropriate okay. and lighting and the shielding of lighting is in, in basic zoning is that already it is, but um, even then, there's that added um, measure of review for in special. So permit. special permit will make sure they actually get it to the zoning standard. Right, right. or not at all if it doesn't. Or exist. not at all yeah. if it can't be done. Right. Yeah, I mean, we look at the sets of plans where there's you know special sheets just for the lighting and the picture of the lighting. You know, and so it would well, often. But if you're going to be lighting outdoor that. gardens at night, you're not going to be able to comply with the zoning regulation. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, if there's nothing else from the board from legislative matters, I'd like to open up for public comment. Um, Could I just one last clarifying yeah, thing? About, so the first sentence, growing and cultivating outdoors without greenhouses, blah 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 blah, and uses start to see less than 20 feet and only between April 1st and May 15th. What is permissible is not allowed. It, I don't quite understand that first sentence. So. Um, it it's intended to me be uh, to mean that you can't have any you can't use greenhouses or hoop houses or any covered structures except you can use cold frames or row covers for seedling starts but only between April and May so, so then can I so just to clarify so this is the definition section uh -huh. so the what imagine what would come right before that is outdoor cultivation is growing cultivating outdoors without these structures. So that's is saying if you want to meet the definition of outdoor cultivation, these are the criteria. Okay. We'll take comment from the public. Uh, please come up to the podium and let us know your name and address, and we'd be happy to hear from you. Don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I, I'm Mark Warner. I had um, been covering this, following this issue for a while. I had an op-ed piece in the Daily Hampshire Gazette in February where I raised this concern about odors and whether the city was advancing too quickly in its quest for pot dollars. I've also made a couple of statements to the city council. So it is with great delight that I see that you are taking a position that there is being a hearing. And I support Carolyn's um, proposals, the 056 and 057, and their specific calling for the air filtration system to deal with odors. This is a big concern here, and I think the city has to go ahead and get it, get this system in place here, this ordinance going, before there are facts on the ground, which makes it, which makes it, of course, a, uh, a uh, non-conforming use, but not uh, illegal. So this is important to get going right now, and I hope you can move this along very quickly. But I still stuck with the question in terms of 058, where the ordinance for outdoor buying marijuana, where you've introduced legislation, where you're talking about types of ordinance that would uh, change some of the requirements for growing marijuana, but not actually curtailing it outdoors. Now, what, what I'm concerned about, what I'm not clear about, is why there's a recognition of the odors that could affect the butters. And you're right, this issue is something that's evident in other states. You know, your daughter is ex experiencing this in Colorado. This has been, there are plenty of evidence of this in any cities uh, or in communities around the United States and Canada that have introduced uh, recreational marijuana growing. And uh, I'm going to just read a quick quote here. This is from the head of the professional planners of Norfolk County, Ontario, where there's been extensive cultivation and processing of marijuana, where it said, uh, can you imagine living next to 10,000 skunks? For some Ontario residents, this is their new reality. 
And while it is bringing employment, it is bringing in opportunities for people to go and turn their farms from celery production into uh, something that generates a lot more income, it is still something that undermines the quality of life for the neighbors half a mile away. And what this guy is finding out in this, uh, these communities in southern Ontario is that people are abandoning their properties and all of the adjacent communities are rushing to get the ordinance, ordinances to make sure that their community too doesn't become a, a planting ground for marijuana. So I come back again to this issue of why if you're dealing with odors from a, a greenhouse or from a facility here in Northampton and you're requiring them to have air filtration, you're not doing it for outdoor growers. So I'm encouraging you to now go and take a next step and postpone, or not postpone this, go ahead with this, but take another amendment to say, no, we are not going to allow outdoor cultivation which cannot control the odors. Now you may think that, well, it will dissipate, but I think the experience elsewhere is that it won't. And furthermore, well, you're not really sure that it won't. So you have to err on the side of protecting the neighbors and do what you can for them. The second piece is, well, you know, is this, is this the soil that's going to be supportive of cultivating marijuana outdoors? Well, the people in Happy certainly thought so. The farmers there were expressing an interest in saying, this is the richest farmland in the world for marijuana. They wanted to do it, but just a few weeks ago, Hadley passed a zoning ordinance that said, no, you can't. There will be no outdoor cultivation in, in Hadley because they put a requirement that said, you must control odors, and that can only be done in a facility. So they have taken the next step of saying what happened. Now, if you're concerned about putting in an ordinance that is going to be too onerous, that is going to stop people later on permanently, when it, in fact it wouldn't have been a problem, well, you can check it. Sheffield, Massachusetts is the first place in Massachusetts, which is, this is bad, I have to look around where this town is, it's by Great Barrington. This is a community that's going to allow, beginning this spring, a 70 to 80,000 square foot outdoor cultivation of marijuana. Wait until harvest time. So put in an ordinance now to postpone it. Don't allow, I mean, you've got to allow it, you, you've allowed it now. You've got this ordinance that's saying, let's go and make some measures here. You say, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, We've got the fencing now, let's go and, and make these other measures. But before you make any allowance, so not, I mean, there is allowance now, but bring in a new amendment, a new ordinance, to say we will not have this, you can retract it later on. Wait and find out a year from now what was the experience of Sheffield, and pull it back then if you need to. If it turns out it wasn't an issue, fine, you know. But until then, I think it would be in the community's best interest, the quality of life here, and, you know, abandoning properties, you know, maybe something that's not a lot of laws in Leamington, Ontario, but it would be a significant loss here in Northampton. So I encourage you to take this next step. And you can do, I'm not sure what the protocol is for bringing up a new ordinance at this point, but you've got the planning board, you've got the, you know, the legislative committee of the city council here. I hope you don't miss this opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Megan Dobro. I'm a resident of Leverett, um, and I'm a scientist and CEO of one of these hopeful upcoming testing labs. Um, so I just wanted to give um, a brief summary of the nature of these testing labs, and then I'm happy to take any other questions. Um, so we'll have five major instruments that are testing um, for cannabinoids, heavy metals, pesticides, um, that kind of stuff. And they're out of the five machines that we have, uh, three of them are using liquids, and so there is no um, gas coming out, there is no vapor, so there's nothing to filter out in the air. Um, the other two use liquids that are so small it would fit in a coffee mug for everything we're doing in a day. So it's really small amounts that we're talking about. Everything is in a closed system. Um, we work with within um, uh, hoods that have filters on them. Um, also, the amount of um, cannabis that we have in the lab at any one time was reported by one lab that, that's bigger than, than we would start off as. Um, that, that lab, at any one time in their lab, they have about $100 worth of product. So it's so, so tiny. We're testing a gram at a time. Um, and so the, the testing labs, are you're, you're not even going to know what's happening in there as you walk by. Um, 
we have to follow all of the um, regulations by the Cannabis Control Commission, um, ISO, Department of Public Health, OSHA, and DEP for um, everything that we're doing for waste management and um, fuel mitigation and everything. So um, there's, there's, we consulted with um, someone who started uh, and built a lab in Martha's Vineyard and just confirmed there, there's absolutely no odor that comes out of the lab. Um, um, there was a question about heating, and so um, there is a little bit of heat that is um, helping to break apart some of these compounds within the closed machine, but as I said, there are no fumes that come out of that. So um, we're either using small amounts of heat in a closed system with filtration, or we're using something that's like a microwave digester to, to break apart um, chemical compounds. Um, I think that's all I had, but if there are any questions? So from your perspective, in terms of the ordinance that, that has been crafted for Northampton and the, the air handling for testing, is, is that <coughs> something that seems, you know, something that seems sort of normal, appropriate? Um, Do you mean the air handling for cultivation? Yes. Oh, okay, so that wouldn't apply to us, right? Because we are a testing lab. Um, but we have to follow very similar regulations that, um, that are mandated by these um, uh, organizations that re require that we have filters on everything. So you, um, you're talking about the testing facility that you're already running or that you're proposing we're, we're to. to run? Yeah, we're hoping. Um, and you talked about only um, a gram at a time is being tested. Is that uniform for all places that are going to do testing? Is there a possibility that more will be processed for testing and that there could be kind of different outcomes than the kinds of outcomes you were talking about? Um, we're, we're basing what we know, because we haven't started yet, we're basing everything on what other labs are, are reporting in the state. And um, those are fairly large labs. So a large a, a lab could grow in size and be able to handle more product at a time. Um, it would take quite a bit of square footage to do that. Um, and you know, even if a lab doubles its size, it's going from $100 of product to $200 of product, we're still talking about handfuls. Um, so certainly not enough to create any odors or, or hazardous, hazardous materials for anyone outside of the building. How many, how many jobs does, does it create around the, around the lab? Um, so depending on how many shifts we run at a time, we need about three chemists at a time plus a receptionist um, per shift. That's, that's absolute minimum with no redundancy. So it would it would likely double that when we're at full capacity. <clears throat> so without sure. getting too much into your business plan, so this is a private sector initiative. <clears throat> You'll be competing with other testing labs, much like gas stations who do emissions testing. I take my car wherever I want to it. So it's different than the drug testing labs that got choked up and just overrun by so much testing to do. I'm surprised that the Commonwealth didn't get into the game. Um, um, but theoretically, your business could grow to an extent that you would want to expand multiple times in, in a city like Montana. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a question? You're welcome. I'm trying to understand yeah, the situation. No. Yeah. yeah, so the, the state Right now, testing is the bottleneck of the industry yeah. in Massachusetts. There are far too few testing labs right now. Can you do testing in a basement? Um, so we do need to vent our machines, so as long as there's access to the outside. It wasn't a basement question. <laughs> so uh, 19055 says any marijuana any manufacturing, cultivation, or testing facility must incorporate both high efficiency particular air handlers, activated carbon filters, and exhaust system uh, designed to vents that force air at least 10 feet above the building. Then it goes on to say, alternatively, other technologies may be used upon a finding by the planning board through cycling pool process. Um, so 
So, do you, from your experience, do, do labs need to exhaust 10 feet above the building for what you're doing? Um, and if, if not, then the question of the planning board is, somebody's going to have to come in and go through the site plan review process as a lab operator to say, given the small amounts we're handling and the way we do it, we can filter within the and equipment that's, itself. Just a reminder, 055, that's only in the PV district. So that's only at the state hospital. So right. if the location is anywhere outside but, of that, then right, you would have to do that. But yes, since there's one theoretically to, going up there. Mm -hmm. So yes. that I would suggest if I that that language be amended. I don't I think the intention was really to focus this on the manufacturing <coughs> production side. That's what so it I think seems like. point that if you just added all manufacturing facilities as opposed to then by default wrapping and testing. Right, because manufacturing and cultivation. Right. Yeah, because cultivation clearly needs the air filtering. Right. right. And manufacturing clearly does, but testing might not need the same as the other two uses. So, so I think that's just a good point. Right, or testing from that first line? No, because the first line it ends in a period, so we want to allow manufacturing, cultivation, and testing. But then the second oh, sentence, all manufacturing, all manufacturing okay. cult or cultivation facilities, so that it doesn't pull in testing with that. But you could still impose filtering standards on testing, but that could be done site plan differently. I mean, do you, or do you well, care about that? What I'm suggesting is it shouldn't. It's not. It's, it's not appropriate. It's not, not necessary. Not to the okay. level of cultivation right. of manufacturing. So just to clarify, you said that you need you'll need to vent your machines. Do you mean <coughs> for smell or because they're heating up or? Um, yeah, good question. It's mostly for heat that's coming off of the machines. Um, it's certainly not for smell. Um, we're using a small amount of solvent, as I said, what we put in a coffee mug per day, and there are fumes that come off of that, and so we have to follow very strict regulations about how we vent that. Well, yes, I'm a, I'm a little confused. I must admit, you mentioned that this language is only for the PV. Um, 055. So that's um, so 054 is the the one that's just about testing, and then yeah. 055 is is about the PV district, and it it allows okay. testing in the state hospital district, but it doesn't. But the recommendation is not to have the onerous air handling on testing facilities that are in the PV district, so kind of funneling down to a very specific situation. I have a question. So in 055, the first sentence, any marijuana manufacturing, cultivation, or testing. So we're agreeing that you're going to strike testing? No. So this is a paragraph that goes within um, the whole plan village um, section that has a lot of uses. So use is allowed by right and it goes by categories. So this would be a separate category. So the category would be any manufacturing, cultivation, or testing, period. Then the next sentence would be all manufacturing slash cultivation facilities must incorporate. Because without that, all facilities assumes or presumes that that also means testing would have to incorporate that. Okay. So it's just the second part of that. And your thought was that manufacturing would encompass processing? Yes. I just see that that struck, someone struck. Under, under the statute, processing is part of cultivation and manufacturing. Okay. There's no separate processing of marijuana use. Right, there's no definition for that. No, it's, it's all part of those two uses. Great. Any other comments? Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Um, so procedurally, sometimes we will close our public hearing and then continue to have discussion. Um, we often don't like to do that if we want to be able to talk to folks in the public, but in this case, there isn't an applicant. So I would say I feel comfortable if planning board wanted to close its public hearing and if legislative matters would like to close it. We would hear motions on that. <coughs> So, oh, so um, I formally open for both of you guys, for both of us. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you've got to close it yourselves. So I'll make a motion to close the public hearing on the, uh, the amended ordinances. 
Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Moved close to here. Second. Okay. Uh, in favor? Everyone. Uh, is that unanimous? <laughs> yes? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Aye. So, discussion among our respective bodies. Um, I think we've heard a lot. You know, I mean, to me, having gone through all of this, I think there's a couple of really good tweaks that we've made. Um, one sort of outstanding question, or this may be for another hearing just regard to what we've heard from the public is with regard to outdoor cultivation, um, is there any, in the future, would there be any interest in or validity to putting some sort of physical constraint on it in terms of the size of the outdoor cultivation? You know, like, is it appropriate to think about limiting it the way we do other activities, like limited to 30,000 square feet or limited to half an acre or something like that? Is that something that we might want to talk about at some point? Um, I mean, I definitely think that would be some a conversation for a later date. I will say that all of that is allowed under special permit. So if an applicant came in front of you and um, proposed um, something that the board determined through evidence that it was so big that it would create um, negative impacts mm -hmm. on the community or the surrounding neighborhood, then that would be a way that you could restrict the size of that. Okay. I will also say that the ordinance restricting the size of the accessory structure to 1,000 square feet, very tiny. it's small, and I think that will necessarily dictate how large a grow area a farmer could cultivate. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the, there's sort of two pieces okay. that would um, lead to addressing um, some concerns. I kind of have a, a question for Alan, because given, given the relatively short growing season we have, and then we start restricting how much area could be cultivated, we're going to get in trouble for de facto making it impossible for somebody to do it. Or is it perfectly fine for us to say we don't want outdoor, you know, be, come right out and say we don't want outdoor cultivation uh, and to just say you're not going to do it versus having somebody come after us because this growing season's short and we're only going to let you do a thousand square feet, so therefore it isn't viable to do it. No one knows. I mean, <laughs> does, is that unreasonably impracticable mm -hmm. to do outdoor growing? I don't know that the. Uh, that the statute requires that all aspects of the marijuana industry need to be available in every community. Um, there are a lot of open questions. I'm, I'm comfortable that we that it's not unreasonable if what you're doing is regulating it because of, you know, the the concern that Mr. Warner raised um, about uh, the potential for odors from outdoor <coughs> cultivation. Um, but truth is, no one knows exactly what unreasonably impracticable means in this context. I, I honestly don't see the odors as a legitimate point. I mean, you know, there's, like, I mean, I drive next to farms, and they smell like manure, and I find that noxious, and then, you know, I, I mean, personally, I, it's connected to the wind, but I live right by the Coca-Cola plant, and there's this horrible noxious smell mm -hmm. on certain days, and you know, but I certainly want the Coca-Cola plant to stay here and be a good, good employer and all the rest of those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole bunch of smells out there, and to me, that's a bizarrely subjective thing. It's also, I know from personal experience growing up in California, walking into pot dens where I didn't want to walk into, and you didn't smell it. You just needed to get out of it because your life was, you know, there was, there was a, you could get into trouble. Um, and so, I mean, I, I think we're exaggerating those smells in reality. And more importantly, it's a subjective thing where there's a bunch of other horrible smells that I don't like smelling, but I wouldn't try to stop a pig farm from, you know. Really? I mean, I hear you. It seems like the ordinances as tweet through our conversation, do a, a pretty a really good job of balancing, you know, establishing sort of a threshold and then 
when things come before us through special permit process, we can have a, a more complete discussion on an actual, you know, individual case, you know, when something is actually before us about the impacts that it would have on abutters and on the community. And, you know, so we have the latitude to, to really dig into that on a, a specific, when there's a specific application in front of us. George. So we're relying a lot on this <coughs> special permit application. Does anything in the marijuana industry have to start with a special permit? Or is, what's the criteria? Or the, the outdoor cultivation requires a special permit. So 19.058 for Aaron, that outdoor cultivation always right. would require a special permit. And then the the others are either by right, 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 right or site plan. So, so there's different right. layers so there of review. <coughs> and so, so not everything is going to come before us. The outdoor That's right. planting will, but some of the testing won't come before right. us. It'll be allowed by right. right. So, um, so they're sort of written so that the things that seem to, that seem to uh, maybe warrant the most oversight from uh -huh. us have the most oversight. You know, uh -huh. so so if there's um, a question about outdoor cultivation and the impacts on the community, that that's because maybe that is an unproven activity, that that would require our highest level of discretionary evaluation. And getting back to the odors, if in fact, I think, did you mention there's some interest in doing something like this on Kennedy Road? There was an inquiry um, by a prospective applicant. The application hasn't gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. The land was purchased, though. So, so if the... So the, the remedy, if you will, for indoor activity is we require a, a very capable filtration system, which in, we hope will resolve any issues before they arise. Um, if someone gets permission, receives a special permit to do outdoor growing, mm -hmm. is there, that's, that's it, they've got it, there's no remedy at that point? Well, I mean, our special permit would. I understand, but, but we we would have to. We just guessing as far as the odors. Well, I think you know, like with a lot of our special permits, we're there's a lot of you know I don't I'm not an expert in stormwater, but you know yeah. we take in a lot of technical information about mm -hmm. things and then make reasonable conditions. So I think with this, you know, if there were a special permit application, an applicant would bring to us all of their evidence. I would imagine the public would come with. Mm -hmm. its evidence and its opinions and we would have to figure out what are reasonable conditions and if any of those conditions were not met then that would be yeah. required enforcement you know that would be, that would be um, a situation where somebody would you know the if somebody receives that special permit they are bound to to those conditions that we would set forth so it, it's not a yes no it would be you know yes and then here's all the things that you need to comply with so you know that's that's our highest level of, of review so does that but does that i mean to answer your question if a set of conditions were imposed <coughs> and complied with and yet there were still odors that would be a matter for the board of health and for the dep okay. because no you know it would be out of uh, louis hand the building commissioner's hands because they're complying with the conditions. i hear what you're saying about odor yeah. odors happen but there are ample news stories about this. It's really, as as you mentioned, it's really become a problem. Mm -hmm. No, I, I I don't mean to I don't, I don't mean to speak about it in this, you know, anything, anything and everywhere. Of course not. It, you know, and and, but I think that we that we want to stay stay away from from imposing no's at this point mm -hmm. when. We have a put. We have a system in place right. that we can put restrictions on it, uh, and you know, I mean, that's why we have a public court, and we would all mm -hmm. ask. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I would care deeply about it affecting neighbors, and you have to be able to answer that question. You know, like, what are you going to do at different times, and security, and yada 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 yada. Yeah. And I just think that. Imposing imposing a no is uh, or even or even a delay. I think is is not. 
I don't think it's needed because we have we have something in place right now where we can make sure those things are answered, and we and we we can go far. I mean, we we've gone far with buildings. I mean, right. saying like you have to have uh, a certain style of yeah. of, of, <laughs> yeah. of siding, you know. I mean, as an example. So I mean, yeah. I mean, why can't, why can't we? I mean, I think we have this notion of we're just allowing growing, but of course we wouldn't right. allow that. Okay. Um, procedural question for Carolyn. Are we taking separate votes on whether to... Okay. So your recommendation would go to City Council and then Legislative Matters makes a recommendation to the full Council as well. Okay. And then Council mashes it all up. Can I ask one more super quick, tiny, easy question? On the outdoor cultivation, does the accessory building have to be ADA accessible? Just on its own. I believe it does. Yeah, I think the board is sweeping about this. It's not so many. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks. So, how are planning board folks feeling? Do you, do you feel comfortable making a motion on this package of ordinances? With the amendments? That With the amendments described by Carolyn. Right. And so, as I understand, we've only edited one of these proposed amendments? No, two of them. So, 054, which is by right, in, uh, for testing and processing in CBEB, HBGB, the amendment is when located above or below the first floor. Um, 055, the amendment is in the second sentence, all manufacturing and cultivation facilities. 056, there is no change. That's medical marijuana, uh, air filtration. 057, there is no change. And 058, the changes um, that the definition of outdoor cultivation includes what is stated through uh, between April and May, and so eliminating those specific dates and then removing the word processing from the last sentence. April 1 to May 31? Yeah, so April 1 to May 31. Did I get them all? Did you get 19055 with? Separating out testing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, is there a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to move these ordinances forward with all the stated changes? I move we <laughs> accept the ordinances as amended. Great. For a second? Yeah. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you. So we need to do that as well. Um, I'll uh, move that mm -hmm. group as, as amended. Move I'll as second it with a positive recommendation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to our 730 hearing. My apologies. Our 730 hearing is a set of proposed zoning amendments that define short-term rentals and uh, amendments to the zoning map uh, and use tables. Carolyn, will you give a quick um, update for us? Um, sure. So uh, this um, is to define, this whole package is about defining what short-term rentals are and where they're allowed um, and setting up a registration process that will be set up sort of in the exec, in the administrative level um, to coincide with the new state law that will come into effect um, July 1. Um, that addresses uh, short-term rentals. And it also amends our, um, we currently have on the books for a very long time, have had tourist home bed and breakfast. So um, that is just a minor amendment to um, the definition of, um, of that definition just to refer to it as bed and breakfast, which is treated differently than a short-term rental. Um, so as before, is everyone comfortable? We've got seven or seven ordinances here, I think. So we'll go through each of them and then take more public comment and have some discussion. No, because I, okay. I don't think we can. Like I can't. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I'm patient. Uh, so we'll go through each one and then we can remove this as a package as well. Okay. Um, so I. Uh, and we've seen some of this language before. Um, and is it correct uh, that community resources also review these? No. Yeah. Okay. So this is the. So it's just going to legislative matters and planning. Okay. 
So the first big change, 19068, is a short-term rental is now a dwelling unit or room within a dwelling, leads to an individual or a group for less than 28 days at a time. And then is the language in parentheses just kind of like a sidebar, or that's also incorporated in here? It's a sidebar, but it incorporated, and it's just to clarify that a room for rent within an owner-occupied dwelling is an allowed accessory use for any dwelling unit. So if you're if it's just a room as opposed to the entire unit, then um, that it's not considered a short term rental. Even if it's less than twenty eight days? Right. Because you're, so, you're doing it within your own house while you're living there. So what's the difference between a room within a dwelling, like in that first sentence? Because you're still there, uh, you're you're just renting out space in your apartment or your house, and uh, the other one is you're you're entirely giving over your space, your living space, to someone else for less than twenty. Okay, days so the time. key thing in that first sentence is that without the owner being occupied, right? The space. Right. Right. Okay. Um, no, so, uh, and I don't know if maybe we'll get to this, but. I have, I have a beach house, and one of the complicated things, because they're dealing with this right now, is um, if the owner, let's say if I have a duplex and I live on the first floor, then does, can the owner do a, do the short term, a short term rental on the second floor without being labeled because they're in the same building? Well, is it a separate unit? And do we have beaches in location? <laughs> <laughs> um, if it's in, if it's part of the same unit, then you're saying you're leasing out. A so first people, people are leasing out. They're trying to get around this yeah. these owners' rules by saying, "Well, I have a, it's in the same building, and I live here." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I have a separate kitchen, but it's actually the same building. It's actually yeah. the same. So this is about units. So we count units as okay. kitchen, bathing, and eating yeah. facilities okay. would be a separate unit. Okay. Yeah. And the owner occupied section, dwelling unit, that's the principal residence of the owner where the owner resides or intends to reside. What how do you what's the intends to reside? You just like write a letter from your lawyer that says like she intends to reside? So that just seems so funny to me. Like um, so it's like, do we need that or is that like I don't know, it seems um, yeah, so I think it's just, it, we don't have a definition now of owner-occupied and because this is coming up as part of the short-term rental, we needed to, um, you know, people may own multiple, multiple dwellings, yeah. but, <laughs> but their intention is that they have a primary dwelling. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's considered to be one that they, their owner occupying is their principal dwelling, essentially. The, the key term here is domicile. Mm -hmm. Because domic a person can have any number of residences, mm -hmm. but can only have one domicile. And the domicile is the place where mm -hmm. the person makes the center of his, of his familial right. and civic life. And wherever you intend that to be is where it is. So, I mean, right. most, most... I guess uh, I just get hung, hung up on, like, your intention. Like, either you are or you're not. Like, either you get your electric bill to this address or you don't. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that clause but, of it just seems unnecessary. Like, right, but you could buy a house and not be there yet and intend to make it your domicile. Yeah. Or you can be somewhere else and intend to make this house in Northampton your domicile. I, I know it is confusing. I don't think it adds or... Yeah. Much yeah. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be clear to say an owner-occupied single-family dwelling unit rather than dwelling? Well, the single-family is not. I live in a multi-unit right. building. That can be but like, so, but it's a dwelling unit that you occupy. You live in a multi-family right. dwelling, but you occupy a single unit. I yeah. mean, that would kind of be the Sam's question. You know, can can you? do rooms in the second unit in your building that you don't reside in because you reside in the building but not in the unit. Is it unit related or building related? Good 
It's unit related. Yeah. So that it would be an owner occupied single family dwelling unit. Not single family. But it's not single family. It's just like owner occupied. Well, the unit might be single family. But that's not what, what we do generally refer to a single family. Yeah, I mean single Just family is one family. Very specific. So we're back to Sam's question. No, no but Sam wasn't a single family. Sam was right. a multi-family. Multi multi right. But so beach. so can someone <laughs> can, can so so can <laughs> Sam in his multi family building B and B rooms in his personal unit that is his domicile? According to this well according to this, yeah. I mean okay. that wouldn't even count as short term. Yeah, because he would because he's living. Yeah. 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 He's living yeah. in his dwelling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if he if he does rent the rooms upstairs, then that would um, that would be a short term rental. It'd be right. rent out the rooms right. in the upper right. unit, right. Right. Mm -hmm. or the upper two units. And so then he has to live in the building, but not in the unit. No, he has to live. Or does because owner occupancy comes into this, correct? Right here, only for this part. Only for the owner. Only for the part that says um, a dwelling is the principal. Oh no, I'm sorry. When an owner-occupied unit is allowed, yeah. If it's if he lives there, rents a room, that's allowed already. So can a non-owner-occupant B and B a building they own that they don't personally reside in? Yeah, that would be a short-term rental. Yeah. That would be a short-term yeah. rental. So yeah. that's just, we, this is just the setup just the of where so you're allowed to do this okay. and what you have to, how you have to register. So it's creating the definitions so that then, in, then you'll know in which zones in the city you can do a short-term rental. Yeah. It seems like the other, I mean, maybe we'll get, we'll get to this, um, but I mean, in San Francisco, the problem is not one of the problems is not uh, owners necessarily doing it, but renters, <laughs> you know, just renting, right. you know, feel like I'm out of town, so I'm going to, I mean, you know, so then, so then the problem is, is that they can afford these sort of astronomical rents because <coughs> half the time they're not there, they're just Airbnb being their, their apartment. So like the, the rents, the, the rents jump up not because the owners are actually taking advantage of it. I mean, the owners are taking advantage of it because they they are they are a lot there they can charge more rent. But they are actually like they are actually getting charged it's it's the fact that the tenant is doing it. Yeah. But we don't have any purview. But we can't require an owner to include a short term rental yeah. clause yeah. in their tenant leases. I mean we right? I mean we can't can we do that? We can't. Well, no, but you yeah. be, I mean, if it's your, if that's the place you're leasing and then you're suddenly letting it for less than 28 days, that's a short term rental. Yeah. Right. So you'd have to register as a and, short term rental. And most residential leases they say do not that permit that something right. <coughs> yeah, yeah. for a day, for a month, for a day. Right. So landlords right. should be enforcing yeah. it yeah. if they feel like they're losing money on it. So, okay, so that's 10 no, we'll <coughs> Uh, 0696969 just specifies in the water supply protection, special conservancy, suburban residential, rural residential, that um, you add short term rentals as an allowed use by right, but only upon registration with the city. Um, yeah. yeah, we have a okay. yeah. Thank you. And then also, um, use is allowed by special permit, just amend it to make for 30 minutes down at breakfast. Great. Um, can no, I, ask? I, I missed something there. I, can, can we do this again? I'm not sure why we're specifying just these four districts at this We're point. not. The whole package yeah. has the entire city. Okay. The, the, way, the reason why they're grouped this way is just the way that it shows up in the code. Okay. And it's just taking a, a batch because they're, um, they're organized similarly in, in layout. Uh -huh. So. Um, it was easier to specify it in the groups that looked alike. Okay. Yeah. Right. Can I ask um, one question? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, is there a fee associated with registration? And what's the difference between registration and a license? Um, so there will likely, there is going to be a fee with registration. And um, they're only going to be one year registration, so you can't gain grandfathering through this. Mm -hmm. um, 
we don't know what the fee is. It's just going to be based on whatever makes sense. Right. And then does that make it a license? I mean, is it like, like what's the difference? Like, I'm just used to seeing like the budget line item for like licenses and cheese and like, uh, you know, yeah. so like, oh, is this just like it's another? It's not a license. It's okay. simply registering. We're not issuing anything. We're just taking in okay. the information, the registration okay. information. So we now so no know who should be paying us right. post community fees. We're collecting that. Who should be paying? There's taxes. no criteria that the person yeah. has to meet that gets reviewed. Like, yeah. but that's actually because, like, in other cities, like Cambridge and Somerville, it's like you go to register your Airbnb, and that triggers health department is like, okay, well, show me that you have like hot water and like. A safe environment and like fire alarms, like that's like I just wonder if like our registration maybe should result in like a, a little bit of oversight. Well, there. Well, it, I mean that's the point is we want to bring all these folks into the fold and figure out what things that we need to be um, concerned about. And also, there's a conflict with the building code for some of these, so we need to yeah. iron all that out. But okay. we want to know who, where they are. So the, that registration process has yet to be determined, but it may right. include a whole host it's of other things. It's really my expectation that if people are doing this, that you know, the, that there's yeah. health safety things that should go along with it. Seeing a lot of Airbnbs. <laughs> it's very scary. I'll tell you, it's a range. Very scary. <laughs> and I, I, but again, the fee can't exceed the cost of administering the registration, right? Because then it's okay. a tax. So right. 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 Okay. Great. Perfect. So definition of that's cool. So you're a. There's actually a case in Northampton about that. Right? Yes. Florence Harbor. Oh really? Yeah. It was a court decision. Okay. A while ago. Um. So your A table, your B table, same. We all for a year, December thirty first. You are C. Yeah. Oh, so you were in your B special permit is for bed and breakfast. Um, right now it is, but we're moving that to um, by right in the URC instead of by right. special permit. The A B is the special permit. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Are we still on uh, 069? We're up to 071, I think. Uh, 069 was like six pages because it's it's each. They're all the same. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Just the, the and then the bed and breakfast. Yeah. So there's a little variation in bed and breakfast allowance. So you are C. Um, and then, um, so then we get to um, central and business, entrance business, highway business, and office industrial. That they're again allowed by right. Um, same language. Um, and then. GB and NB um, modified to allow bed and breakfast um, by right, and also allowing short-term rental with the same registration. Um, and then uh, by right short-term rentals for CB, EB, HB, OI. Uh, and then Plain Village also, but adding bed and breakfast or short-term rental. Great. So I'll love the comic. Oh, just so, so essentially, it's the same in all the zones. If it's an owner-occupied unit, it's a bed and breakfast. If it's not an owner-occupied unit, it's a short-term rental, but it's permitted in both instances. Um, almost. <laughs> it could still, an owner-occupied could still be short-term rental. You don't necessarily have to get a B a B license, uh, permit. There's still, so... <coughs> So if I own a two-bedroom condo, I can rent out that other bedroom for Smith graduation weekend. I don't have to tell anyone. I don't have to register. I live there. Here's my second bedroom. Go nuts. And I can do that for three nights. No problem. Mm -hmm. But non-owner occupied units can still be short-term rental. Yes. It just requires registration. Hmm? It just requires the registration. registration. Yep. Any other questions or problems with 6 9? Bed and breakfasts have to also register once a year for only a year. Every annual day they have to register. No, no. They get a special permit from the planning board and then that's it. Okay. <coughs> yeah, we issued one a couple months ago, mm -hmm. like nine months ago. No, a short term rental. 28 days at a time 
that's not a year, that's consecutively? Right. No, less than 28 days. In a year. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely... No. Oh, and then, no. It, that, it's less that would than, not... It's less than 28 days time. at a time. Right. So, so if it's essentially, so that's saying you're not leasing it on a monthly basis. Right. It's less than 28 days. Right. But because uh, what the state limit is, what if you do it less than 14 days, you don't even have to register pay the tax at all. Right. Okay. So a short-term rental is something less than a month. Yes. To the same people. Yeah. Right. Okay. 19.070 uh, is for URA, URB, um, same, and then bed and breakfast by special permit. Questions, comments? URC, 19071 is that URC closest into town, allowed by right, bed and breakfast, and short term rental with registration. And then 072, bed and breakfast, short term rental. Carolyn, what are the, what's, what do the A's mean? Just allowed? Allowed by right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the only thing that's not allowed in general business is a better practice. Right. 073, central business. Oh, and EBHB and LI. Right. So, and what's the deal? Bed and breakfast are allowed by right there? No, the, because the bed and breakfast is, is by definition a single family home. So we don't allow single family homes in the CB or GB district. Oh. So you couldn't have a B and a, Bed and breakfast because you're not allowed to have a single family home. Yeah. Pre existing non conforming? Well, yeah, that would be a fine thing. So, but it's oh, not going to be an allowed. Yeah. So, like the Masonic Street building behind Bella <coughs> that was offices, like, yeah. they were going to turn that into a bed and breakfast. They couldn't for the. Well, no, they matter. could be a hotel or a motel. Uh, I see. Just bed and breakfast. Right. Is that but correct? There, there, are, there are single family pre existing and central business that have never been anything else. Right, but it wouldn't be, but we're not codifying it as an allowed use right. in the district. We're saying it's a non-conforming single family, and if they wanted to turn it into a, a bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. they could. there's a mechanism for them to do that. Yeah. But, but we're not saying it's allowed by right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, 074 is uh, Plan Village. And, <coughs> and same as 06. So I'm a little confused by the formatting in the last sentence of 074. Um, any bed and breakfast period, any short term rental period, short term rentals must be. It's because it's the way that the table is set up where you have a list of your blocks of uses. Uh -huh. So this becomes another cell on the table. Yeah, a uh, of uses. Uh, okay. yeah. Any separate question? This is a very easy one, I swear to that. Um, so, and maybe we haven't figured this out yet, but these registrations will be managed by the building department or by the planning department? No. But we don't know yet. Um, we don't know, and it may change, but it certainly, it will probably start in the mayor's office, um, but it may change somewhere else. And will we make registration public? Like they do well, in the is public. Oh, yeah. Right. Because that's the best thing ever, like when I look up to see if like a cruddy Airbnb is registered and, or like I have a good one. And you, when you can see the ones that are registered on like the City of Cambridge website yeah. and know that they're actually going to be like clean and yeah. not disgusting, it's great. So um, so this all seems wonderful. I feel very happy and comfortable with all of this. Does anyone have questions, comments? I guess I, 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 I think it's a, I don't understand. I, no, no, I, I just don't understand why. We, what the difference between this and a regular rental is? I mean, I, I mean, I guess I, my feeling is, as someone who rents places, that all things should be registered. Because if you're like, if we care about sort of the safety and all the rest of that kind of stuff, then we should be caring about all things. But now, if this is just to get us in compliance with a Massachusetts law, that's a, that's the same. That's a different thing. But I just don't understand why we don't have registration for anybody who's a, a who's a landlord. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. there's a bunch of slum slum landlords yeah. out there, yeah. Yeah. and I I personally think that this is yeah, I'm a smile. 
Well, yeah. But that's only a fault yeah. to the Board of Health away by well, a tenant. You see, yeah, uh, I mean, but, but to me, that, that to me, of like, all the things, like, that's the worst thing that can happen is a proposal to the board of health. I mean, that's like a, a abusive. That often is an abusive tool that tenants will use. Whereas if it's just perfectly good up front, then that is. Well, isn't I mean, one of the reasons we're doing this is because of the taxation. Right. You know, because right. if it's right. a short-term rental, a it's taxable as a short-term rental. If you're renting on a month-to-month -month basis, it's not a short-term right. rental, yeah. so you don't have to pay that right. tax. And also, we have the right to come up, um, collect host community fees from short-term rentals under the law. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a, a dollar definition. Well, <laughs> and, and, which is, I mean, yeah. it's so... It's like, 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 Amherst okay. registers every rental. You have to, you can't rent a, a unit in Amherst without registering it, and you have to show where the parking is, and, and they yeah. make sure that there's no parking on soft surfaces, and um, and what it really found was that there were dozens of illegal two families who had never gotten permits. I spent about two years representing people getting their permits to make their two families legal. It was, yeah. it was really the lawyer's relief act that rental registration was. Seriously. Well, I, I get that, no, I, I, and I, I understand that. I just think, I mean, I, I walked into this, I looked at a house the other day, and I happened to ask what the tenant was, was, was paying, and it was, for the whole house was $600, which in Northampton is clearly nothing. But really what this was is that this was like the, the tenant and the owner had made a sort of a, a devil's pact. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I'm not going to bother you, and you're going to give me this small amount of money as the exchange. And it, I, I mean, I, when I was in it, I was just like, this is a third world living environment. No one should, no one should be living like this, especially in our town. Now, obviously, that's going to lead to higher rents. I get that. I mean, that's a consequence of that. But no one should. It shouldn't be okay. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I someone should have reported this house to right. to the health department. And um, anyways, well, I think we're we're, we're far afield. Yeah, here. far afield. Oh, yeah, we'll start this process <laughs> and then we'll see how things yeah. unfold. <laughs> yeah. um, so again, we'll take two separate votes on these packages. Yes. Um, planning folks. Mm -hmm. Going to close first. Well, oh, yes. Oh, we didn't problem. even do it. I'm so, I apologize. Well, I just had surgery, so I'm like not in my right head. Uh, yes, we're happy to take comments from the public on these. If you I might comment. Great. Please, comment. Um, wasn't prepared to uh, come tonight, but I saw it on the agenda. Um, and I have been for more in Stanley, 197 Armatuck in Florence. Um, I have been an Airbnb host for going on six years now. And I'm watching things change and very aware that they will change. Um, and no, uh, I'm a, I have <clears throat> several people in my world who are also hosts. And we're watching this, <clears throat> excuse me, the Massachusetts um, changes play out across our worlds and trying to decide how it's going to impact us. And knowing that Airbnb has been a very sort of relationship-based, trust-based community, mm -hmm. and once there is a registration in place, which will happen statewide, <coughs> and is <coughs> unusual in the Airbnb world, Massachusetts may be the first state to actually require a registry, which turns the Airbnb um, system kind of inverts it because now any host no longer has the opportunity to decide if they feel safe bringing somebody into their home because their home will be registered as a place where you know somebody is offering a unit. Um, I'm not worried about that personally, but I know it's a big kind of paradigm shift to this mm -hmm. crowdsourced environment. And I would just encourage um, Northampton to take the chance to reach out to people like me who have felt themselves to be like ambassadors in the community and get to welcome people into their homes and get a glimpse of the town from another side. People who wouldn't necessarily go to a hotel, you know, and they get to see another side of it. Because we're all really big on offering our our home to 
people coming into town, and we're proud of being able to point people to restaurants and neighborhoods and get that glimpse of it. And we're all sort of kind of wondering, like, oh, is this when we're going to sh like stop doing it? And I don't think I'm going to stop doing it, but I know it is really a community of people who would love to be involved and be able to have a voice for wondering what's going to happen with the registry. Mm -hmm. We're all happy to pay taxes that start to happen. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But um, it does have an impact on our roles as hosts mm -hmm. and as people who have opened our doors to folks from around the world. Yeah. So why, um, just a question, I didn't understand what you said about the safety. Like, yeah, why is what, what, well, we, in, in Airbnb, and I know what happens with VRBO and um, HomeAway, they don't, people don't, people who ask to stay in your house, they don't know exactly who you are and where you are until you've done a little vetting. Like to know that um, it's whatever you decide is vetting. For me, I want to know that it's somebody who wants to stay in an older house in Florence. <coughs> that they're looking for a plan, they're comfortable going up and after a flight of stairs. That they know that there's a 62 year old woman going to be on the other side of the door from where the part of my house they're staying in. That you have that handshake. And um, as soon as you. It, it, you don't know. Now you don't have a picture of them. They have a picture of me. I don't have a picture of them. But they don't have my actual address um, or my full name, and I don't have theirs until we agree, yeah, you'd love being here. Yeah, I'd love having you here. So there's a little bit of well, there's a safety issue from my perspective that we'll lose a bit of that when we're in a public registry. And that's something that really has not happened in any other locations besides Massachusetts until now, until July 1st. And, and as I understand it, I mean, I mean, I don't fully understand exactly what you you have, but you won't have, as I understand it, she won't have to actually register because it's in the same house. I will in Massachusetts. I don't think I will in Northampton. I'm not sure. Okay. But people will be able to search this registry but your advertisement in Airbnb just gives a generous lo a general location of Florida. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to yeah. be able to find you on Airbnb. Yeah. They won't, but they will in Massachusetts registry, I think. No, there's not going to be a picture of your house. They'll have a name, an owner's name and street address. Well, this will be interesting when I think there'll probably be a few more, you know, there were, I think, two public forums about this. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't. I think it'll be cool as there's more of them. Kind of hear yeah. your experience and like. I don't you know. have all the answers. I really. Yeah. Don't. I'm not sure, and actually, like, we're all not sure. Right. You no. Know? Um, in Cambridge, well, yeah, in Cambridge, you look it up and you can see. But I, I can't. I can't go find an Airbnb that's listed on the Cambridge registry because okay. I don't know. So I still have I to like take a shot in the dark. It. It's only <laughs> after I stay and I'm like, wow, that was really clean. I wonder if they registered, and then so it doesn't provide me any actual. Okay. Other than and again, yeah, I don't. Really, I don't really have any like any agenda. I'm just realizing yeah, yeah, there's sure. a lot of us out there, and yeah. we are resources to tap. Yeah. And we're at a juncture. At least a few friends of mine who are also doing this, friends and neighbors, were thinking, is this when we? switch gears and stop doing it. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be great to, to have you guys at you know, the next upcoming forums and stuff. So thank you. Thanks for your serious thinking about it. Thanks. Um, sorry about that. There isn't anybody else here. So I'm going to say Hi. Would you like to close your public hearing? Close the public hearing. Second. Um, aye. All in favor. I, I move to to uh, do, do we have any other comments? No. I mean, we're all comfortable with this. I'm comfortable. Everyone's we didn't, comfortable. as the previous ones around the marijuana ordinances, we didn't have any, any of this language on these. No. Right. No. 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 Who's making a motion? I'm making a motion. Uh, I, I move to uh, to approve uh, the proposed zoning ordinance amendments that, to define short-term rentals and amend all zoning district use tables in all districts. Is there a second? Yeah. Yuri, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 
I'll move the package with a positive recommendation for the Post Chief Council. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Great problem uh, here. We have other business. You don't, I don't think, correct? Right? No, I think right? you can hang out. Hasta la vista. Nice to visit you. I'm in favor of uh, legislative matters. Second. Aye. Aye. We don't know her. We need you to not. I mean, I'm sorry if I didn't know. Shut up. So our first other business is a reduction in the letter of credit for Northview. Um, so they've asked, um, the applicant put in a request probably a year ago for this reduction. And there were some issues that we needed to have addressed. Um, Can we take a two minute? Um, uh, bathroom break? Bathroom break? Yes. Wow, so we'll we'll take a two minute recess. Let's yes. do that. Let's do it. Uh, reduction letter of credit, Northview. Sorry, yes. Yeah. So, um, so they've asked to, oh, let me find my sheet here. Sheet, sheet. So they have currently $308,728 thousand dollars in a third party agreement they want to go down to two hundred fifty three thousand twenty two two hundred fifty three and twenty two um, and we we also um, still are holding off the new building permits because they need to fix some stormwater stuff so I think it's fine to reduce this what they're asking for is they need a little bit of relief so they can make some other modifications too. So they need to use that money yeah. to do the yeah. increments that we're requiring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's the subdivision, um, the Northview subdivision, so it's north of Ford Crossing. Um, it's, the street name is Higgins Way. Mm -hmm. It's a little loop that's going up on the very north side. So this would be um, our vote is to uh, recommend or approve? to no, to approve the request for a letter of credit reduction. I'll move to approve the uh, the question. Is there a second? Second. Yuri, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? No. Duncan, do I need you to the post? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Duncan Donuts had a site plan where they and I. I thought I printed out a big one, so I'm just going to bring my computer over so you can see. Um, Which Dunkin' Donuts? The brand new one, one on David Road. That's very I don't even remember, remember when. Yeah. 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 Never yeah. 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 it. David Trump. It did. It did. Because I remember we talked about the different. We, we so, talked about stopping. Yeah. Um, like the and they wanted initially they wanted to have an entrance and exit on David Road. Or bridge, whatever that's they still called. have. They want. They they got the request for an exit on two sides of the property that need to be restricted to right in, right out yeah. only. Mm -hmm. yeah. They haven't built the restriction the way it was shown, oh. and it's obviously not working because people are making left turns out of there on State Road. And that was a big um, issue. So we're yeah. sh we're sh um, I've been in contact with the designer to say, and DPW has looked at it and said, hey, this isn't built to. This is not yeah. deflecting. You know, left turns. Um, but this request is not about that right now, because we still need to do this. They um, wanted to, this was their site plan that was approved for the landscaping. They have a tree island here and a tree island there. Um, they say that they're having problems maneuvering trucks around this one, so they want to turn it into a striped island with no mm. landscaping and no curbing, so mm. that they can have the trucks come back this way to go to the lake. Hmm. So um, I didn't feel that that was an appropriate administrative uh, approval from staff. Yeah. So um, I said I would bring it to the board. So I also s would recommend that if you do approve that, I mean, I think it probably makes sense to, given that we really want to encourage traffic to come this way, and if the trucks can't come this way to get to the light, 
that um, this could go, but I would say, I would recommend that the tree get planted somewhere else as opposed to just disappearing yeah. from the site plan. Heck yeah. Yep. So the trucks are coming from here? No, when they come around here, they do deliveries, and then they have to turn to come back through here. Where so is, they're coming where is through. King Street? I'm not quite oriented here. Um, King Street is parallel here. This is Damon Road. Okay. And this is Industrial Drive. And so, so this is Dunkin' totally Donuts. Yes. And this and building is... Uh, three tenants. So there's the Hothead Burritos, Kevin's Haircuts. Okay. And they're they're coming from this place, place. Yeah, thank you. Well, the they track. could be coming right in like this and okay. then looping around, or they could be coming in here and then they have to do delivery and circle around and come back out. And they, they can't go back out from that. Or if they're turning right. left, they need to go to the light. Mm -hmm. But they may also want to go to the light anyway because it's a wider access because this is supposed to be narrow to restrict. Because I've come in there a couple times and I find that. It's just easier to come out on an industrial drive no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't sure it's an issue. I mean, they, they could say this. I'm, I'm just saying, like. You mean the diverter or the tree? That tree. Like, yeah. I, I'm always. like. Are you big, in a truck? Yes, I'm in a big truck with a bunch of ladders and everything like that. Yeah. But a pickup truck or a cube truck? What? Pickup truck. So, are they talking about talking about, I don't know box how big, but they have yeah. at least box trucks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that, I mean, as long as they move the tree, I mean. Mm -hmm. As long as they keep the tree that's somewhere else. Yeah, right? then, okay. you know. Okay. Yeah, I think, again, yeah, we can retain the tree. But then, say again, though, like, like what would what's be the this, purpose of striping if the tree is done? Well, the striping is to just, so it's not parking, and that you're still, like, for cars, they would maneuver around it, but a truck could just drive through it, wow. right? So you're just, yeah. I mean, it just seems like, an, like unnecessary striping. Well, except that if you want to give a visual narrowing of this yeah. for vehicles, you know, and, and so it's safer because you're going to be forced to go slower if you go around here. It's just the trucks, it would be easier for the trucks to maneuver and cut the angle right. as opposed to a car, which can easily do it. Where is the parking now? There's parking here, 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 and then there's um, parking uh -huh. down here. So if their building is this one here. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, the, the, real par the real parking to this thing is like, it, it, I mean, customer parking is here. Like you might, you know, the restaurant might park something here. Yeah. Maybe some employees are parking there, but the real parking is here and here and here. Yeah. But really, it's heavy drive-through traffic. But really, it's heavy drive-through drive traffic. I mean, the, the what I'm just pulling out of here was the most not fun to talk about. You know. Can we can we require that that they uh, donate that that semicircle to? Public art is going to be striped. I'm serious. Um, it's still being a visual. On the ground, public art? Yeah. You can't require that they think, oh, well, <laughs> your striping has to be striped. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's but a new one. I'll do it. Yeah. Maybe I'll just vandalize it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, put the tree somewhere else. And then you know you're on camera. <laughs> um, I'll vandalize it. That was good. She's so, so is already busy to do that. Is there any pedestrian <laughs> striping here? Is there is there a pedestrian already uh, yeah. crosswalk? So let me just see. There is there is no one. pedestrian no. crosswalk. They're also I mean, not, honestly, they're also not done. Yeah, they're, 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 they're clearly not done. I mean, yeah. like they are, yeah. like they were. There is some striping required. They didn't just email me that plan, so I I can go and pull it up. So do we have to tell them where to put the tree, or we just have to say? find another place on your site for this tree. Mm -hmm. um, we have to, we can tell them to select a place on the site and in the end we just count, make sure that they have the same number of trees that they had on the upper plan. We're comfortable on that. Okay. So these are mirrored, so this tree is staying yeah. because they they don't have the same issue because of right. traffic, these are all small. Yeah. So how are you going to stop how, are you, how is the city dealing with the real issue of the traffic flow? Yeah. Well, we won't give them a final certificate of occupancy. Until but, but given the fact that they're all in, already in use, who cares? Well, by the condition was there. Will it affect them? Will it affect them? Well, well, yes, they need a final CO to... to yeah, they need a Yeah, they need a final certificate of occupancy. And then the city could start finding them if they're in violation. Okay, I just didn't... Yeah. I mean, just, 
it's clearly totally everything is rented and yeah, right, right, right. Completely fine. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Yuri. Is the motion to approve the application with the condition of maintaining the tree elsewhere on the site? Okay. And striking that item. Yeah. Second. Second. All those in favor? Yes. You have those? All right, so then we have, yes, we don't have minutes. Um, approved. Okay, and we don't have minutes. <laughs> we don't even have minutes. There's nothing to approve. We have an a &R. Where is it? It's on Crosby Street. So Everybody know where Crosby Street is? It's on the corner of Crosby and Sherman. Oh, I know Sherman. Sherman Ave. Yes, so for it, um, Day, Day. Yeah, Day. Day Avenue is here. Uh -huh. um, so this is a lot that is um, at least two, three, potentially three deep. At this wow. point, they're just going to carve off one lot here. Um, their intention is to create a zero lot line uh -huh. um, so that this house could be closer to this um, shared uh -huh. lot line here. Where do these people, that's their driveway on it. Sherman? Yes. And they're ultimately going to relocate their front oh. um, door so that they could have three houses. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Motion to endorse. Yeah. Motion to endorse the Second. Yeah. Okay. That up there is um, the sewer beef? Yes. Okay, great. Right, move to close the meeting. Approve. Second. Oh, yeah. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so, make sure.